Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, it's very easy at some points to get discouraged, to get black pilled. When it comes to the grassroots conservative movement, we've taken a hit. 2016, of course, was the start of the snowball effect, and it's been tumbling down the hill, gathering steam. But there's been some roadblocks, we'll just leave it as vague as that. And of course, as you guys know, in conservative spaces, there is an element of doom and gloom. I mean, I think it's dissipating. I think it's temporary, it's fleeting. But but it still exists. My message to the people who are getting black-pilled is very simple. Patience. Just be patient. Left-wing ideology, left-wing policies, this woke neo-Marxist revolution isn't going to last very much longer. In fact, I'd say its days are numbered, or probably within the political scope, its years are numbered. The pendulum is, in fact, swinging. And I think in this case, it's swinging pretty fast because, very simply, left-wing ideology, and especially far-left neo-Marxist ideology, is absolutely absolutely unsustainable. I mean, just take a look at Portland, for instance. Portland is a trailblazer when it comes to progressive policies. Portland also happens to be essentially a third world country, in a lot of aspects, of course. It's a city that is crumbling to the ground. San Francisco actually is very similar. People are fleeing, the tax base is fleeing, companies are struggling to survive. And of course, when you think of that environment, which was created by left-wing policies, one word comes to mind, and it's what I mentioned earlier, unsustainable. Left-wing ideology, left-wing policy is very quickly going out of fashion. The woke radical left is taking a big hit, and let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this right here from the Gateway Pundit. Just in, Senate overwhelmingly votes to block DC's criminal code bill that reduces penalties for homicides, carjackings, Warnock votes present. The Senate on Wednesday overwhelmingly voted to block the DC Council's criminal code that would reduce penalties for some serious felonies. The Senate voted 81 to 14, with Georgia Democrat Raphael Warnock voting, quote, present. Here's the breakdown that shows the 15 Democrats that voted no or present. 14 Dems voting no are Booker, Cardin, Duckworth, Durbin, Hirono, Markey, Merkley, Murphy, Reed, Sanders, Warren, Van Hollen, Welch, Whitehouse, and Warnock voting present, essentially voting no. Before we get into just how ridiculous it is that any of these Democrats would vote no on this bill, Let's just take a moment to truly appreciate just how bipartisan this vote really was. 81 to 15. It has to be a joke. I cannot believe this is happening. Listen, all right, listen, listen. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams. You better fix this sh right now. <laughs> Democrats are actually suffering a meltdown at the idea that criminals will be prosecuted for violent crimes and be sentenced to appropriate time in prison for violent offenses like armed carjacking and homicide. Now let's go back to that list of Democrats. 14 Democrats voting no and one voting present. This is the perfect example. This is really a learning moment. It should be a moment of reflection that elections have consequences. Elections matter. Let's focus primarily on the state of Georgia, which is more or less a Republican state. You might say that it's a swing state nowadays, but in terms of the most recent governor's race, I mean, Doug Ducey beat Stacey Abrams by a whopping seven and a half points. For the most part, I view Georgia voters as more common sense, at least for the most part. I think the whole anti-Trump Republican thing happening in the state is a little bit unfortunate, but it's not some woke leftist bastion. Please, Georgia voters, take a moment to absorb the fact that the Senate candidate that you voted for, Raphael Warnock, voted no here. This is what you voted for. This is the individual that you sent to Washington to represent you. A man who votes in favor of criminals rather than law-abiding citizens. A man who votes against the interest of a community, against the safety of a community because he has fully subscribed to the lunatic woke doctrine. Is this really better than Herschel Walker? Is this really better than a Trump endorsed candidate? You gotta be out of your mind if you think that that's the case. I get that Herschel Walker isn't a slick speaker, an academic, but at least he's not a woke lunatic. I feel like that should be a pretty basic standard. I have a feeling though if this continues, we're gonna see a total collapse of woke left-wing doctrine, policy, and ideology because it's just simply unsustainable. Not only on crime, not only on the economy, but also their border and immigration policies as well. We're finally seeing some pushback, thankfully, from Democrats in Democrat states on the woke left's open border policy. New York City is spending $10 million a day to house and feed illegal immigrants. 
New York City Mayor Eric Adams taking a shot at Kamala Harris and the Biden administration for their inaction on the illegal immigration crisis, the border crisis. Two, there needs to be a, an individual who is dedicated to do the decompression strategy for the federal government. Someone should be at these entry points, El Paso, Brownsville, uh, uh, Texas, and others to organize a real decompression strategy across the entire country. One person should we should be looking at. Uh, it is often stated that it's the role of the VP. That's too much in her portfolio to be focused on just doing that decompression strategy. If not, the decompression strategy can't be New York City. And the mainstream media told us that Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott flying and busing illegal migrants to New York City and other Democrat cities was just a political stunt, a PR stunt. It seems like it was pretty darn effective to finally bring some common sense on the issue of open borders. Absolutely friggin' based. Even some Republicans are so-called conservatives, recalling the Florida and Texas governor's actions publicity stunts. Boy, oh boy, was it effective policy. This is just unfair for cities to uh, carry the weight of a national problem. We're going to open four more uh, hotels, emergency hotels. We have to open Herx. Uh, this is a major financial impact on New York City and cities across this country that are receiving a brunt of it. I think what Abbott was doing has like proven effective. Like it's flooded our system. It's the concept of rules for thee, but not for me. NIMBY, not in my backyard. Democrats are fully willing to endorse ridiculous woke left policies, as long as it doesn't affect them in their states, districts, and cities. Well, if they're creating a humanitarian crisis and it's falling on red states and border states, just ship the problem to them. And then all of a sudden, they're calling for a decompression campaign. And the decompression strategy cannot be New York City. Keep sending the migrants to New York, Chicago, and Washington. And don't stop. They're the ones advocating for open borders. No human is illegal. Borders are racist. Well, then keep sending illegal migrants there because it's their policy. They should be the ones paying and dealing with it. The crisis has gotten so completely out of hand. The taxpayers are now shelling out $151 billion each year due to illegal immigration. It always comes back to the exact same word. Unsustainable sustainable. Woke left-wing policies simply do not work. It's that typical la-di-da liberalism. Democrat academic theories are exactly that, they're theories. But whenever you test these naive la-di-da theories in reality, it's always the exact same result. The woke left Democrat fantasy land will never function in the real world. And this is why I always say the strategy should be simple. Republicans ought to not focus themselves with Democrats. They're shooting themselves in the foot automatically. Simply Simply offer alternative policies, an alternative vision. Democrat policies, Democrat cities are failing, and it's only a matter of time before the entire thing starts tumbling down. I believe we're starting to see the free fall. I think there's only a short amount of time left. The woke left is imploding. Total collapse seems right around the corner. And when it finally happens, I won't be surprised, not even a little bit. That's what I got for you guys, though. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know, we'd love to have you here at the Liberal Hive Mind. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.